Hello HD examiners. This is Jeff Morrow with Sierra Analytics. And today I wanted to show you a simple walkthrough with some example data that we have available. This walkthrough will show you how to load up the sample data, calculate the results, then look through the results and curate them to make sure that they make sense. So if you haven't already checked out the introductory video to HD Examiner, uh, go ahead and do that now. It will go into more detail than what I'm going to do in this video, but the purpose of this video is to show you how to load and to work with the example data set that's available on our website. If you'd like to download it, check in the comments below and uh, you'll see where to get it. So here is that example data set. You'll see that there's a FASTA file, there's a, uh, there's a peptide file, which actually comes from Proteome Discoverer, and then there are four thermo orbitrap files, a, a, uh, an under deuterated time point and three other time points as well. So to start off an HD examiner, you can either go to new and select a FASTA file, or you can just take the FASTA file and drag it right onto HD examiner. There it is there. Similarly, you can drag on a peptide source and because this, uh, this table has labeled columns for attention time, charge, and sequence, um, HD Examiner picks those columns out and, and, and does them properly. If HD Examiner can't figure out which column is which, you can simply click on these headers and, and tell it which column is which. But it got it right in this case because the, the uh, columns are already labeled. So we're going to add those. There's our peptide source. As usual, we can filter it if we like based on score. We can turn individual peptides on and off if we like. But uh, these, as it turns out in this example data set, this is already a, a well-filtered uh, list of peptides. So we're gonna just add them to the pool. Add them to pool one. Okay, and there we go. They're all red because uh, they don't have any data associated with them yet. So let's do that. We load up some data files, so we can bring them in here, select them, drag them. This is the dialog that comes up, shows that we have an undeuterated and three partially deuterated runs, and it correctly guessed the, uh, the deuteration times based on the file names here, 30 seconds, 900 seconds, 3600 seconds. So these defaults are all correct thanks to our, our well-chosen uh, well file names. So we can just click OK, and the data comes in and it starts calculating right away. While it's calculating, we can start looking at results if we like. Uh, we can see uh, that this, this one is yellow, which means medium confidence, so we should take a look at that one. And yeah, it, it, looks, like, uh, it looks like it's probably correct. The reason it's yellow or medium confidence is there's this other stuff interfering, but it's not actually messing with our result. Our, our main isotope cluster here looks pretty good, so we can uh, be, be pretty sure that that one's all right. As we scroll further down here, we see that there's, uh, there's a few uh, that are red or, or low confidence. That means HD Examiner wasn't super happy with the result that it found. Um, here's one that we can zoom in and see maybe what's going on. Yeah, the fit doesn't match very well, and there's other clusters around. There's other stuff going on. What I would do in this case is I would uh, try a manual override, so I right-drag over that peak, and no, it's still red. I would look over here and see what the M over Z shift. Yeah, the, the M over Z shift is actually bigger than, than most of the others for this result, so I'm actually going to trust HD Examiner here and... Uh, that's probably not a correct match. Another way to look at the results that we get, uh, and in fact the way that I prefer looking at the results, is not here in the analysis view where you can only look at one result at a time, but rather here in the peptides view where we can look at an, an entire uh, peptide at once. So now these uh, red peptides from before are now mostly green, meaning that um, 
meaning that the deuteration curve over time that we get from our data makes sense. That's what the green means in this view. Well, this one's red. Well, let's see why that is. So we can open this up, look at protein state one and Z equals three. And here we have some results that uh, didn't, didn't work out. It looks like what's, what might be happening here is a little bit of chromatographic drift um, that HD examiner isn't quite uh, figuring out. So what I would do is first I would try taking a, and right dragging over this range to say, no, try this other range instead. So it calculated that and it still calls this result low confidence. And I think the reason for that is that there's this other big peak right in the middle kind of messing things up. However, if you look around that, that big peak, the other peaks actually make some sense. So I'm gonna try uh, manual override here and calling this medium confidence. Remember, HD examiner ignores all low confidence results. It just treats them like they don't exist. So if I wanted to try, if I wanted to tell HD examiner to try this, I would have to set it to medium. I'm gonna repeat this same process uh, for the others. Again, this there's that one peak in the middle, but this might actually be correct. So I'm gonna set it to medium. Uh, this one, it actually did a better job of, but let's override it. Again, set it to medium. Now you'll see over here on the left, the, the peptide turned green. Well, that suggests that, you know, this might actually be a correct match despite that other peak in the middle, because when we, uh, when we tell it to use that data anyway, we now have a fairly sensible um, uh, uptake curve for this peptide. And if we look at its neighbors, the, the curve is actually, you know, somewhat on par, especially with this other one, which is fully overlapping with it. So this may actually be a, a correct result that we got by doing a couple of overrides and telling HD examiner to, um, to use the potentially dubious, but probably okay isotope cluster there. I would then go through and repeat that process for these, these other uh, red and, and yellow peptides to see, uh, to see, you know, to make sure they all make sense. And then after that, I would of course go back up to the protein view, calculate my heat map, and now because I've gone through and, and curated my data, uh, I have a, a pretty good and pretty clean heat map telling me what the behavior of this of this protein is in the sections that I've I've measured peptides for. You can see it doesn't cover everything, but where there is coverage, uh, we get a pretty sensible uh, heat map for this protein. So that's all. I hope this video was helpful for you. As usual, if you have any questions, you can email us at support at hdexaminer.com. This is Jeff Morrow with Sierra Analytics. Thanks for watching.